In a world where nothing is known, nothing is certain, reality is not real. Wake up! Be afraid of nothing. I'm Bob Heskey. Robert. The host with the ghost. This is my podcast, based on my paranormal documentary, Afraid of Nothing. Each episode, we talk to people who see life and the afterlife through a different lens. Join me. Who is this large man? And what's he doing in our bedroom? As we lift the veil and open our minds to see beyond our eyes lie. This is Afraid of Nothing. Nothing. Hello, everybody. It's uh, Bob Heskey, the host of the Afraid of Nothing podcast. This is a little bit of a different episode. I'm actually going to I thought I'd take some time to introduce myself and explain the reason why I'm doing the podcast. And I'll tell you a little bit about the documentary I made that kind of inspired this podcast. So I have always been a person who's felt I've had tunnel vision. I've never had like a psychic antenna. I've never felt like I've been able to pick up things or had intuition or anything. And I never really thought anything paranormal happened to me. It's weird. After I did the documentary and some things did start happening to me, then I remembered some things earlier in my life that happened that I was like, ah, it's nothing. (laughs) You know? So anyways, uh, when I got married, I got married uh, about over 13, 14 years ago. And uh, at this point, sadly, I'm divorced. We are, uh, I'm I'm in a point of transition right now. I'm moving out of a house that's uh, probably... Second oldest house in Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. It's uh, circa 1713 or something. And I'm moving out of here and transitioning to uh, a temporary place before I find permanent housing. And uh, I just, you know, part of the reason I'm doing this this right now, too, is I'm probably not going to interview someone for a couple of weeks. So I wanted to take this opportunity to maybe get my thoughts down and explain why I'm doing this this podcast, which I'm actually loving. So I have two daughters. One is Carly. Uh, She's uh, 13 now. And the youngest is Emily. Emily's 11. And if you've followed any of the podcasts so far, you know, in the second one with Brad, the little frog Hudson, he talks about this little girl that was a crazy experience where he went and did a journey and she showed up on it. Well, that's my daughter, Emily. She has autism. She's kind of, we always thought there was something kind of unique and special about her. She had uh, remembered a prior family. She doesn't mention much of it now that she had before us, all that stuff, you know. And uh, my ex-wife, who is a little bit psychic herself, had some intuition with her. So the other crazy thing that happened with Emily was back in 2010 for a two-week period, we were noticing on the baby monitor a little sinewy, spidery type object kind of prancing over her while she was sleeping. You know, being the non-attentive husband, my ex-wife brought up to me several times. I'm like, yeah, it's nothing, right? Then finally, after a couple of weeks, I was home alone watching her. I had the monitor out in the living room, and I saw it, and I paid really close attention. I was like, it just, nothing. And I went and checked, and you know, it was just, it was nothing in there. And this had been going on, as I said, for two weeks. At night, in the morning, whatever, it would still show up. So it wasn't like a light thing or anything like that. We had moved the beds, moved the monitors, and it kept showing up. So I had really paid attention and honed in on this day. And I took out a, a video camera, and I uh, I taped it. It wasn't a very good video camera. This is back in 2010, so amazingly, it's they, they were very kind of uh, low quality, but uh, did get some footage, and I made a, a film that I put on YouTube called The Ghost in Emily's Crib, and it got picked up and noticed by a couple paranormal shows, and you know, that was my first start thinking, wow, maybe there's something in my family <laughs> regarding this, and then uh, my ex-wife had met Brad, who uh, she worked at a uh, a massage place, like a sports massage place, and he he is a shaman, and she kind of met him, and he had an interest in working with autistic children because he thought they vibrated on a higher level, and there was just kind of thought what he thought his work was meant to do, you know? So he came and met Emily, and he had that whole crazy story that you can hear about in uh, episode uh, two, where basically he went on a journey to help cure her of, uh, I don't know, pneumonia or something that she had in... Uh, she joined him on the journey <laughs> and that had never, I mean, it's like, it's crazy. It's like uh, someone joining you in your dream and being with you and then 
going back. It, it was, it just blew him away. I still remember the email like we got. It was just, it just rambled for paragraphs and paragraphs. He was totally blown away. <laughs> uh, we, we I became friends with Brad and I decided I wanted to do a, uh, a documentary because I thought he was such an interesting guy. He had such a great story where in midlife he was, he was a rock merchandiser. He had a business. He did that for like 30 years and he had kind of awakening where to shamanism and one day he's selling rock merchandise and then a couple of years later he sells his business and he's uh, doing demonic depossessions and healing people. It's crazy. So I decided to do a documentary. I called it Afraid of Nothing. And the name is really a double entendre. Half the world is afraid there's nothing when you die. And I was really one of those very afraid of that thought of just nothing fade to black. And the other half thinks there's nothing to fear because it's an afterlife and spiritual and consciousness continues. And this documentary is really me talking to people, a wide range of people from the science side of it to uh, researchers, Jeff Belanger, who um, has worked on Ghost Adventures since its inception and does all the research for the shows and is a great, he also has a great uh, podcast called New England Legends. Brad, I did an interview to Witch uh, uh, in Salem, a seeker, an actor named Carl Carvin, who had felt he was reincarnated and was kind of executed during the witch trials. And so he keeps coming back to Salem, and he, and he doesn't know why. He wasn't born there. He, he grew up in New York, but he's always felt an affinity. And we we did a day with him, a past life regressionist we met and with and talked to the witch and others. And, you know, just a lot of great stuff that came out in the documentary. And there was a really cool thread from the spiritual people, whether they're paranormal, whether they're researchers or science-minded. There was this real kind of connective thread among them about consciousness and that it is uh, bigger than us, you know, in our mortal body and kind of what happens after we die. And each of the several, three of the people I highlighted at the end of some kind of very strong experiences that happened to them, and they're all different, but it does also kind of give different experiences that people have in terms of the afterlife and uh, what comes next or what's out there. So I won't spoil the movie too much, but we just finished our uh, festival run. We did a short kind of run and it's uh, been picked up for distribution. So it should be out on uh, a lot of uh, digital streaming services in, uh, I would say, March and April, hopefully. And I'll be announcing that and more on that to come. But, you know, that was really the genesis of me doing this. I, I had had some great conversations and met some cool people. And once the film was done, I just wanted it to keep going. I wanted the conversation to keep continuing. And uh, once you kind of dip your toes into the paranormal, you just meet more and more people. <laughs> and they're really some of the nicest, coolest people around. And they're welcoming. And they're, then a lot of them are really, really good, credible people. So I, you'll be meeting a lot of them on this podcast if you continue to listen. And I hope you do. But uh, that's I just want to tell you that that's why I, I did the podcast as a follow-up to the documentary. Making a documentary, I know I should almost do an episode on that at some point because there's some cool experiences uh, on that and some lessons learned. But, you know, it's something I probably would like to do again in the future. As for myself and the experiences, I I started picking up EVPs a lot easier once I started going to... uh, I went to a couple haunted houses in the uh, documentary. One was the S.K. Pierce house. The other one was Lizzie Borden with Brad the Shaman. I went to one place, the Magic Parlor in Salem, which the director of my first film, Rob Fitz, he owns that shop now. And someone had mentioned that a Ouija board he had had seven demons in it. So we brought Brad in to do possess it. I I bought the board. <laughs> so it was mine. So I had it in my trunk. My ex-wife wouldn't let me bring it in the house. So I drove around for months with it in the trunk before I gave it away to uh, a, a witch and her, her psychic husband, who I, who uh, uh, Mimi Watson and Ken Watson, who are uh, also um, very much involved with the S.K. Pierce house, really awesome people, and hopefully they'll be on the show too. And so, yeah, I uh, <laughs> right around then I started getting these weird EVPs in my car, uh, which we'll share on another show. But they're really clear, really loud. Then once I I took a vacation, uh, I went to my first film, had gotten into a festival in Indiana. I drove down. I stayed at a haunted bed and breakfast in Pennsylvania on the way down. I was getting some EVPs in the room. And I came back and stopped at Gettysburg, and I was getting EVPs there, too. One of those places it said my name, Robert Heskey. The other one said Carly, my daughter, when I asked a question. So it was EVPs were coming very easily to me all of a sudden. So I ended up stopped doing that for a while. And then I, at one point, I had the most crazy experience I was in bed one night, and uh, I was awake, and I was 
I don't know, maybe I was close to falling asleep or whatnot, but uh, I felt my ribcage almost open and something leap outside of me. And I, I don't know how to, all I know is when it happened, it was almost like, like I got punched in the gut, but in reverse, you know, like something came out of me versus coming in. And I just sat there for a minute going, what happened? What was that? Did my soul leave me? Was that an entity that left me? And I, I just didn't know, you know, I've talked to people since then. People say everything from, well, before you go to sleep, a lot of times, maybe that's your, your, your body leaving and astral traveling or whatever. I don't know. I don't think it's that. I, I don't know. It could have been a, a negative entity that kind of left me. Part of the reason I think that is because I was really focusing on being positive after I started having easy EVPs. I would start every day with, you know, thanks. I would thank the Lord, my God, Jesus Christ, my Savior, God and angels, God and spirits in the universe for all the love, protection, and blessing that you give me. And uh, I would just, every day, I would focus on being good and being positive. And one of the EVPs in my car actually was, they're hiding me. And another one was, I forget, I always forget the second one, but it was a string of like three things, you know, oh, they're coming. That was it. They're coming. They're coming. And then the other one says, F God, which is not a very nice thing. And I don't want to have uh, swears on the, on, on the podcast, but. So, yeah, and I always thought, wow, it's interesting it said that because every day I start with, you know, thanking God and uh, angels and all that stuff for their protection. So it was a little weird. And then I dialed it back for a bit and didn't really do any much ghost hunting stuff, but uh, starting to get the inch again. And I'm doing the podcast and I'll be doing more more events. So I'll be a mixture of interviews and I will even go to some places and maybe try to capture some things live that will record for you at some uh, kind of freaky places. Anyways, that's kind of a quick introduction and overview of who I am and, and why I'm doing this. I hope you stay with me for the ride. I hope you're liking it. And uh, thank you so much for, for checking it out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. been listening to the afraid of nothing podcast please subscribe and like us on facebook until next time stay scared hey you're still here great then why not listen to another episode visit afraid of nothing podcast.com to peruse all the shows that's afraid of nothing podcast.com and while you're there Click the coffee cup icon to buy me a coffee and leave a review. I'll give you a shout out in an upcoming episode. And the world will know how swell you are.